do you play favourites with people? And by that I mean, do you spend time with a favourite group of people or do you spend time with more of one person than another? Definitely I play favourites, definitely. When I say play favourites, I don't play them. I, I feel, uh, definitely feel, have more feelings for some people than I do for other people in terms of the feelings of love. Um, you know, I, I love everybody in the sense that I will share with them truthfully, honestly and openly everything that I feel and, and think at the time. However, there are certain people that are far more pleasurable for me to be with than other people. For, exa for example, if a person doesn't believe I am Jesus, then I don't find them as pleasurable to spend time with as a person who does. Also, if a person feels that they need to, you know, spin me a yarn, you know, tell me, as we say in Australia, I should probably make that more worldwide, um, tell me, tell me some things so that, uh, so that I do or say or spend more time with them, but it's not real, you know, if a person acts in a manner that's not honest or ethical or with integrity with me, then of course I don't want to spend much time with them. I'd much rather go out and spend time with any person, in fact, on the planet than to spend time with a person who's being fake with me. There are many people who come to me or come to me in my seminars who are fake with me. And I tell them that they're being fake with me and they still try to be fake with me and so I don't find them very pleasurable to spend time with. Um, I find people who have the same attitudes as myself towards others, the same desire to love as I have towards others, very pleasurable to spend my time with. I also, have, uh, I also enjoy the company of people who just let me be myself. You know, they're not always analysing and always critical and always questioning every action I take, um, you know, as if I've got some hidden, ag hidden agenda or hidden motive for it. Um, you know, obviously, if you're constantly under surveillance by people, you're not going to enjoy the company of those particular people. So I don't enjoy the company of people who are constantly checking me out, constantly analysing what I do, constantly, you know, doubtful or mistrustful of me all the time. I don't enjoy people like that, like I'll spend some time with them occasionally, but I don't enjoy them. I don't enjoy people. I will love them, I will treat them in a loving manner, I won't get angry with them, I won't get resentful of them, but I, but I certainly can't like enjoy their company all the time because I'd much rather spend time with people who are real with me. I also dislike spending time with people who are demanding and who are angry, you know, who are just come along and expect me to do things for them or who, or who enter an emotional bartering system with me. I don't enjoy their company much either. I'll tell them that they're trying to enter a barter and then I'll just say, I'll leave you with that, you know, because I don't really want to spend much more time with them until they sort out that particular emotional barter. I don't like spending time with people who, who are just attacking all the time or pessimistic. You know, I find pessimism uh, something that is rife on the planet and something that's totally pointless and unnecessary. There is no, you know, if a person is pessimistic all the time, they need to work their way through their grief and other emotions that trigger their pessimism. And, and I don't really want to spend too much time with persons who are pessimistic all the time. I'd love to spend time with people who are optimistic, who have some, you know, passion and desire for things. If anybody has a passion and desire for anything, I love spending time with them. You know, if you've got a passion and desire for, you know, fixing up animals or, you know, you know, any pursuit, in fact, like, um, I, I'm, you know, I can spend time in the company of a person who's got some passion and desire for things that are in harmony with love, rather than uh, people who are just sort of, you know, apathetic and just don't care and have no motivation. And, you know, those kind of people don't appeal to me very much. I, I want to help them if I can, but I believe a lot of help has to be can, can only be given when a person has a true desire to receive it. I don't agree with spending time with people who have no desire to, to be real, who have no desire to be truthful, who are constantly, you know, either lying to me or lying to themselves. I don't enjoy their company. And so I certainly don't want to spend much time with those kind of people. So there's, there's, a, there's probably a list of things that I, of people that I would not enjoy the company of. And I do believe, however, and I have seen many, many people who come from those particular backgrounds, like I've seen, a, I've seen many pessimistic people become optimistic. I've seen many people who are just carrying around their sadness like a badge become less demanding, you know. I've seen many people become, you know, 
develop some self self worth and not demand that other people give them worth. You know, I've seen many people give without wanting anything back. And these kind of people I enjoy the company of. And these, I've seen many people change into those kind of people. So I love to assist people to change. And I love changing myself. And I love assisting people to change as best I am able. So if a person has a desire, a true desire, a sincere desire to change, I will generally spend a lot of time with them much longer than many other people would spend with them. And I am often very patient with such people as well in my interactions with them, and even very patient with how they treat me, because many of them treat me quite badly while I'm spending time with them. But I'm still patient with them because I feel they have a desire to change. I don't like spending time very much with people who are just critical and have no desire to change. They think they're right, who are arrogant all the time. I don't desire to spend time with that. And I suggest that the majority of people on the planet probably don't enjoy spending time with people like that either. Um, so I, I, I love spending time with people who are positive, have direction, take personal responsibility for their life just like I do. I, I don't like spending time with people who want me to take responsibility for their life want me to take responsibility for what they want in their life, want me to create for them. I don't enjoy spending time with those kind of people. And I think if most people were honest with themselves, most people probably wouldn't enjoy time with the people I've just listed. <laughs> when we love perfectly, do we enjoy spending time with everyone? Um, no, I don't believe so. I, I feel personally that when we love perfectly, we can we can spend, we can give our love to every single person that we meet, but it doesn't mean that we would seek them out as an, for our enjoyment. For example, if I can, often when we look at extremes, we can see the example, right? So let's give an example. If a person decided that every time he saw me, he wanted to punch me in the face, then I certainly wouldn't seek out his company. And I don't see, if I, even if I loved myself and I loved the person as well, that I would ever seek out their company. I might have interactions with them where they punch me in the face because of situation or circumstance that's been attracted by them, but I would not purposefully go out to spend time with such a person who I know is just going to want to harm me. Now let's look at that from an emotional perspective. If there is a person who I know wants to harm me emotionally, in other words, they want to attack me, denigrate me, pull me down, make me feel worse about myself all the time. Why would I want to spend any time with them? Of course I'm not going to want to spend any time with them. I wouldn't want to do an interview with them. I wouldn't want to talk with them. I wouldn't want to have a seminar with them. I wouldn't even want to go down and row you know, a canoe with them or anything like that if that's what they want to do. Because they want to pull me down and I, and I would have more love of myself than, than allowing that to continue. So I do not believe that any person who loves perfectly would always enjoy the company of another person who wants to harm them or denigrate them. They may still love them. In other words, they will treat them in a loving manner. They will never get angry with them, yell and scream at them, try to violently hurt them in return or, any, or punish them or any of those things. They will understand where the background of the individual and where they're coming from and what they're doing with their life, but they still would not want to spend time with them. Because in the end, you'd have to also love yourself if you love perfectly. So once you love perfectly, you would love each person on the planet as much as you love yourself, not more than you love yourself. And that would mean that you would not place yourself in situations where the other person denigrates you pulls you down, disrespects you, and does it on purpose. Now, you may put yourself in situations where they do it mistakenly, where you know you can confront them and point out the error or whatever, but you, shouldn't, you certainly would not choose to do it on purpose if you loved perfectly. <laughs>